You're watching Silver News Daily. Like this video and subscribe to the channel for the best news that you don't want to miss. Now let's get straight to it. I'm afraid that the gold price is going to go to $6,000 or $7,000. Imagine a world where the might of the almighty dollar fades into history, making way for a new era of economic dominance. Yes, you heard that right. The dollar, once the backbone of global trade and finance, is on the brink of a historic downfall and gold is poised to reclaim its ancient throne as the king of currencies. This isn't a plot from a Hollywood thriller. It's this startling reality we're inching towards in 2024. Recent market trends and expert analyses are painting a picture that's both shocking and inevitable. Gold, the eternal symbol of wealth and stability, is rapidly gaining ground, soaring past $2,060 and showing no signs of stopping. Why? Because the signs are all around us. The U.S. economy teetering on the edge of recession, China's strategic economic maneuvers, and global investors scrambling for a safe haven in these turbulent times. But how did we get here? What are the hidden forces pushing the dollar towards its demise and catapulting gold to the forefront of the global economy? Stay with us as we uncover the unfolding drama of currencies and power piece by enigmatic piece. If you want to be ahead of the game in understanding this monumental shift, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You won't want to miss a beat of what we're about to reveal. In the fascinating world of global economics, every number tells a story and the tale of gold's ascendancy is no different. Let's start with the startling figures that have set the financial world abuzz. Gold is not just inching upwards, it's leaping. Hitting a staggering $2,065, it's sending ripples across markets and nations. But why this sudden surge? The answer lies in the delicate dance of economic indicators and global events. The United States, long the bastion of financial strength, is showing signs of faltering. The Chicago Purchasing Managers Index, a bellwether of economic health, plunged from a robust 55.8 to a worrying 46.9 in December. This isn't just a dip. It's a nose dip, singling a potential recession on the horizon. And it's not just about numbers. It's about the confidence in the dollar, which is waning as investors turn their anxious eyes towards more stable assets. Across the Pacific, China plays its cards close to the chest. Chairman Xi Jinping's vague yet promising comments about bolstering the economy add another layer of complexity. What does this mean for the dollar and gold? It's a global chess game and every move counts. Now, you might be wondering, is it time to rethink my investment strategy? It's a question worth pondering, especially in these times of economic uncertainty. But don't just take my word for it. Dive into the discussion, share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Engage with us and let's navigate these uncharted financial waters together. And remember, for the most insightful analysis and predictions on where the economy is headed, hit that subscribe button. Stay informed, stay ahead. As we delve deeper into the evolving economic landscape, it's crucial to understand the perspectives of seasoned financial experts. Rick Rule, a lunary in the world of asset management, offers a compelling analysis that shines a light on the current state of precious metals. He distinguishes between investing and speculating, a crucial distinction in these volatile times. His insights are not just theoretical. They are grounded in the reality of today's markets, where gold has reached all-time highs, yet mining company stocks lag behind. This discrepancy isn't a mere market anomaly, it's a telling sign of the shifting stands beneath the global economy's feet. Rick's critique of the consumer price index as an inaccurate measure of purchasing power depreciation is a wake-up call. It's not just about the numbers on the screen, it's about the real value of your hard-earned money. And in this scenario, gold emerges as a beacon of stability, a hedge against the unpredictable waves of fiat currency depreciation. But let's not forget, investing in precious metals isn't just a safe harbor in stormy seas, it's an opportunity. An opportunity to be part of a potential economic revolution. Rick advises allocating a portion of your portfolio to precious metals and mining stocks. Why? Because history has shown that these markets have the potential for significant gains. It's not just about protecting your wealth, it's about growing it. Now as you ponder these insights, consider this. Is the rise of gold signaling a deeper shift in the global economic order? Could this be the beginning of the end for the dollar's dominance? And most importantly, how does this impact you and your financial future? Share your thoughts and join the conversation in the comments. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more in-depth analysis and up-to-the-minute financial news. Stay ahead of the curve in these transformative times. Which is to say, buy market beta. Because when the gold stock market moves, the biggest and best companies in the universe can give you three or 400% gains with very, very, very little company risk. For people who are dealing to do more work and take more risk, absolutely, positively. Buy the juniors, a well-constructed group of juniors. 
I, I joke, uh, Dunnigan, because all of the money now I invest prudently, I made by speculating wildly. I'm not saying don't speculate. I'm saying invest first. Own the beta before you seek the alpha. I think it's very important to do that. I have now been through two major bull markets in gold and three small bull markets in gold. And uh, in, as I say, the reference market uh, that I have for the bullion, which is the decade of the 2000s, the gold price increased, as I say, from $253, $255 to $1,850 an ounce. A little bit of portfolio insurance salvaged your purchasing power from what could happen in other sectors. Uh, and it did it very well. It's it, it's very difficult for me to understand why people wouldn't do this. I'm not suggesting that people put 100% of their net worth in penny silver stocks. That's not what I'm saying. Dunnigan, your listeners will be shocked to learn that the market share of precious metals and precious metal securities in the U.S. market is less than one half of one percent, which is to say less than one half of one percent of all savings and investment assets <coughs> in the United States are precious metals related. The four decade mean market share of precious metals is two percent. I believe that at a minimum, precious metals will regain their four decade mean market share, which means that demand for precious metals related investments, gold, silver, gold stocks, silver stocks, that type of thing, demand for those will quadruple. That's precisely what I think is gonna happen. And if you look at the moves in the XAU, if you look at the moves in gold price over time, what you'll see is that when they occur, and they're rare, they are absolutely dramatic. The idea that somebody wouldn't want to put themselves in the way of this move is incomprehensible to me. I don't own gold because I think it might move from $2,042 to $2,150 or $2,200. I don't care at all about technical breakouts, three or four dollars uh, above the trailing average. I own gold and silver because I'm afraid of the deterioration of the purchasing power of my savings in U.S. dollars. I'm afraid that the gold price is going to go to $6,000 or $7,000 or $8,000. Am I saying that's going to happen? No. But I am saying twice before in my life, gold has, rep has uh, generated really, truly substantial gains, gains that offset losses that might otherwise occur in people's portfolio and the ignorance of that history is incomprehensible to me. And now we arrive at the crux of our journey, a moment where all the pieces of this intricate puzzle converge. The question on everyone's mind, how is it possible that the dollar, a symbol of economic might for so long, could collapse, paving the way for gold to dominate the global economy? This isn't just a fanciful scenario, it's a real possibility, backed by sound logic and hard facts. The US dollar's vulnerability is no longer a secret whispered in financial corridors. It's out in the open, laid bare by the staggering national debt and an unstable banking system, teetering on the brink of turmoil. And in this climate of uncertainty, gold emerges not just as a relic of the past, but as a beacon of the future. Its recent price surge is more than a market trend. It's a harbinger of a seismic shift in the global economic order. But this isn't just about gold or the dollar. It's about the fundamental principles of economic stability and the role of trust in global finance. As we've seen, economies and currencies aren't just about numbers and policies. They're about confidence. And when confidence in a currency like the dollar wanes, the search for stability leads us back to one of the oldest stores of value known to humanity, gold. So as we stand at the threshold of what could be a revolutionary change in global economics, it's time to ask ourselves, are we prepared for what's coming? Are we ready to adapt to a world where gold is not just a commodity, but a cornerstone of economic stability? Remember, this exploration is not financial or investment advice, but an invitation to think critically about the future of our global economy. If you found this analysis enlightening, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more insightful content. Stay informed, stay prepared, and let's navigate what this happened in our view landscape together. when gold went up early this month. In fact, it was December the 3rd, Sunday night electronic trading. Gold tagged the front active month, February, tagged 2100 for the first time in history.
All the prior highs of 2020, 2022, and early this year were all up in the 2050 level, but never could get to 2100 on a $50 increment basis. When you hit 2100, there were so many buy stops that were just laid there, ready to be triggered. Uh, probably one, shorts who wanted to get out, and two, new longs who said, okay, I, I now believe I'm gonna get in. And within 40 some odd minutes, you went from 2100 to 2150 with about just short of 50,000 contracts traded. That's unbelievable. What it says is there was a massive amount of buy stops there that once they you hit 2100, they were executing the orders, okay? And you gushed $50 higher. But as soon as you did, if you'll think about the mechanisms involved here, all the buy orders from 2100 through 2150 were filled. So if the market started back down, and as I understand it, the Bank of International Settlements sold some gold there, there was nothing below. I mean, and all your buy orders had just been exhausted. So it was like a void. So when they sold, whoosh, you went back down and you dropped for one week, got down under 2000 again, I think it was 2080 something. And all of a sudden you're back up pressure in 2100 again, this time resolutely, not explosively. Meaning demand is driving gold right back up again. So that collapse we saw from that 21, 2150 high was largely an aberrational thing due to the nature of the orders that were filled, the void in the market. And, and therefore that ex it largely explains the vacuum effect when it started back down again. But then again, demand came in and we're back up pressing that level. We're at, uh, you know, you close, close the month here tomorrow. It's a new high monthly close, new high monthly close above prior highs, et cetera, et cetera. And it did it resolutely. So we still see gold as, as quite an opportunity. We see it as the prime alternative to the other asset categories. Uh, including T-bonds, which we're, we're positive on T-bonds right now in terms of rising price, lower yields, but not in the long term. Uh, gold is, I think, the chief beneficiary because, again, the Fed has to soften, and that's what drives gold, is central bank monetary flooding.